Today I'd like to talk a little bit about testing transistors and you can test transistors with a multimeter. This one, you, there are actually two ways. One is using the diode test function and the other is using a an HFE socket if you set it to this position and plug the transistor in up there. I'm not going to be doing any of that because I assume that uh, you know how to use a, a multimeter to check a transistor as two diodes back to back and if you have a multimeter that has an HFE setting like this that you know how to use that as well. It's in your manual. Instead what I'm going to do is talk more about some specialty testers that are designed specifically to test transistors or include transistors in their specialty functions. So let me start historically by going back to, an, to a little bit earlier time. Here is a blast from the past, a, an Alenco transistor diode tester. It's a kit called the DT100. And I've used this a lot. Uh, in fact, it's, uh, it's always been one of my favorite transistor testers. Now, I used to do a lot of repair work. I don't do that so much anymore. I do mostly just experiments. But when I do experiments, when I have a uh, to get a transistor out, and for example, this is a transistor kit also made by Alenco that I have used quite a bit. When you get a transistor out to experiment, one of the things that I've found to be a good idea is to go ahead and test the transistor. So let's uh, take a look at a transistor. In this case, it's a 2904. And it says it's a general purpose. And I, I think uh, you know this is an NPN. So let's, uh, let me show you how you test this on this tester. I've inserted the transistor, let me zoom in a little bit there, in the socket. Now there also are test leads that can be used, and the, but I'm going to use the socket because it uh, allows me to keep the transistor in view while we look at some of the others. Then you, pay, uh, by the way, you set this to the diode position and you set this NPN PNP switch to the polarity of the transistor. Then you press the test switch and you have to connect up the battery. That's a good idea. Let me do that. All right. Press the test switch and you notice that the OK button uh, or OK LED comes on. Now, what you do is you move the base until the OK light comes on and then if you want a, a measure of the quality of the transistor you continue rotating it until it switches from the OK to one of the positions, in this case the NP position since it's an NPN. And that gives you uh, a relative gain figure. It's near the high end. So that's one way to test a transistor using an old style. This will also test diodes. Another tester from back in the past is this Syncor TF46. It's called a Super Cricket transistor and FET tester. And uh, by the way, I've modified this to use a power supply instead of the batteries. I don't like batteries. I don't do any work in the field anymore. And I don't like the idea of leaving batteries that can corrode. So I uh, put a uh, power supply for those of you that might be interested. There's a jack on the back, a 9 volt uh, with an out, a 9 volt power supply with an output between about 9.3 and 9.5 volts. Uh, center positive is what you need. So how does this work? Well, after you turn the uh, the unit on, back out just a little bit here, you rotate this dial
until you get a sound and at one time uh, if it's battery powered I think it sounds a little more like a cricket than a, than a beep but anyway in this case it's an N transistor which means NPN and these letters show you which is the emitter which is the base and the collector you may notice this says the green wire is in the center and this one also the green wire is in the center so when I go to that one it also works and then if I want to know the gain I press this you see the gain reads out on that top scale in this case it's reading about 200 and in that position it reads a lot lower and the reason is that's actually reverse polarity in other words it's using the emitter as the collector and the collector as the emitter this is the correct polarity and you notice it has a gain of about 200. So we'll save this transistor and use it in some other testers. Now I've connected that same transistor to this Peak Atlas DCA. It's a DCA55. And we'll start it testing. It says it's an NPN silicon transistor and that the red lead is the collector, the uh, blue lead is the base that's in the center and the green lead is the emitter and it says the HFE is around 318 remember we read about 200 on the TF46 and that's at two and a half milliamps and that's one reason that uh, these testers sometimes differ because the uh, the current that they use is different and the voltage from base to emitter is 0.79 volts and the emitter test current that's for the VBE is 4.5 milliamps uh, and the leakage current is 0 0.000 now if we were testing a germanium transistor once again a blast from the past the leakage current would be quite a bit higher. This essentially says there's no leakage. And that's true for most good silicon transistors. A few of them do have some leakage, but largely you shouldn't read much leakage in a silicon. But in a germanium transistor you will. And by the way, if you're uh, testing diodes and you're trying to identify the difference between a Schottky diode, which has a very low forward voltage, like a germanium diode, the difference will be in the leakage current. Okay, let's take a look at another tester. Okay, I have plugged that same transistor into this IC tester and let me zero in on the display. You'll notice that I have moved it to the TR position and for transistors you test those in the bottom three positions uh, on this side. So I'm going to press the enter key and you notice it says an NPN and it identifies collector base emitter. Now this particular tester is primarily an identifying device. It will identify transistors, diodes, op amps, ICs, digital and, and uh, analog ICs, uh, 7400 series, 45 series, uh, uh, high speed CMOS, all of that kind of stuff. And I'm not going to do any IC testing right now, but one thing that uh, is useful is if you're sorting, uh, oh, it also tests zener diodes. And uh, if you watched my uh, video on uh, diode testing, you'll know that this one will test zener diodes up to 50 volts. Now I've switched to one of these uh, well, T4 component testers that you can buy off of eBay from places like Banggood. And let me zero in a little bit here. It's the same transistor. We'll press the test. And you notice it says it's an NPN. Now this one says the HFE is 325. So it agrees with the Peak Atlas. And the TF46 showed a little bit low. And the uh, VF, that is the forward voltage, uh, indicates that it is a silicon uh, transistor. Now, these are 
uh, also usable for lots of other things and we'll be uh, talking about things like that in the future. Uh, things like capacitors, inductors, uh, and so on. I'm using test leads in this case, but you also can use the, uh, the ZIF socket itself. Uh, I like to use test leads because I sometimes use this on uh, components where it's inconvenient to uh, try to get them to fit into there. I've now switched to this multi-function uh, tester. It also can test uh, capacitors, inductors, zener diodes, and other things. The same transistor. And let me zoom in a little bit. You can see it says it's an NPN bipolar junction transistor with an HFE of 324, a VBE of 659 millivolts, and a collector current of 2.9 milliamps. Once again, it identifies the pinout, 2 is the base, and so on. This particular tester has a very short timeout, uh, which can be useful if you... Uh, if you're worried about battery voltage, by the way, it has a rechargeable battery, whereas the one I just showed you has a uh, uh, has a 9 volt transistor battery. Okay, well, all that may be interesting, but uh, suppose that you have different kinds of transistors, like MOSFETs or Darlingtons, which are basically two. Uh, two transistor junctions or small signal. This is a, a kit of uh, power general purpose transistors and it includes a lot of small uh, small power transistors but a few higher power. The uh, here is another assortment kit. Let me zoom the uh, camera out a little bit. Uh, this one is made by Dico, D-I-K-C-O, and one of the things about this one, it has some higher frequency transistors in there that I find sometimes useful. And then, of course, there are some rather special old transistors like dual gate, MOSFETs, and things of that sort. So, if you work with as, as wide a variety of transistors as I do in my experiments, which one of these testers would I choose? Well, let me start first with the DCA. This is the one I've had for quite some time. I find this one more convenient than either the TF46 or the Alenco, so I started using this one. Then, testers like this came out, and this is the T4. And I actually find this more useful than the uh, Peak Atlas, partly because it not only will test transistors, but it also will test other components, which the Peak Atlas will not. And I find that putting test leads on it like this makes it more uh, useful. And, and let me show you why. And by the way, I also find this one very useful. The nice thing about this one, that this one does not have, is it will test zener diodes up to about 30 volts, I think. It won't go quite as high as this IC tester on zeners. But if I were going to have uh, one tester, I would probably make it this one. It's very low, low price. I might make it this one because it has the zeners, but that would depend on whether I had a second tester. If I had a second tester like this that will test zeners, and this one will go all the way to 50 volts, then the fact that this one has zener capability and this one does not would no longer be a serious issue. And in that case, what I would do is I would take these two testers as the two I would keep if I could keep two. So. I hope that gives you an idea of the range of, I certainly haven't covered all the different kinds of transistor testers there are, uh, but I have covered a number of them from old to new and from uh, cheap to expensive. The This one of course is, well, I think costs $7, this one costs over 100 
So I hope that's useful to people who might be uh, starting out. If I were going to start out with one tester, it would be this one because it's so cheap. If you blow it up or whatever, you can order another one. Uh, <laughs> you're not out very much. Uh, if I could only have one tester, it would be this one because it has Zener diodes as well. But my preferred position would be to have one of these and one of these, and that's because I do a number of experiments with ICs, and I always like to test components before I put them into my breadboard. You don't know how much time I've wasted trying to debug a design only to discover that I had a bad transistor or a bad IC or a bad op amp. Also, if you've been experimenting for a while and all of a sudden your circuit goes dead, sometimes it pays to just pull out the op amp or whatever you got in there and test it to see has it gone bad. It could be a, a diode, it could be a transistor, a Zener diode, who knows. At any rate, these are the testers that I like. I hope you found something useful here. Stay safe. Have a nice day.